on the last Sunday of the liturgical year, our Holy Mother, the Church, puts before us the end of the world and the last judgment. She knows that we have to think very often about this terrifying event and that she can't remind us of it too often. St. Paul said, It is appointed to men once to die, and after this the judgment. And our eternal happiness in heaven, or our complete misery in hell, depends on the moment of our death. And none of us knows when that is going to come for us. We have no control over when we die. Of course, people try to extend their lives by taking good care of their health, and, and that's a good thing to do. But when the time comes that God has appointed for us to die, we will go. And at that point, we can't prevent it. Sometimes people living in sin think that if they are careful about protecting their lives, they are giving themselves more time to repent. And they think that they will have time to repent later because God is giving them time now. But it says in the book of Job about people like this that their hope is an abomination. It is something they are using to send themselves to hell. If someone wants to keep committing sin in the hope of repenting later, they will be summoned before God when they least expect it, when they thought that they had a lot more time still. St. Paul said that God will come to us like a thief in the night. And even our Lord himself said, Be you ready, for at what hour you think not, the Son of Man will come. So today the church tells us in detail about the end of the world. And also about the horrible destruction of the city and the temple of Jerusalem. And the dispersion of the Jews as a punishment for rejecting our Lord. And the prophecies that our Lord makes in the gospel today, some of them were fulfilled about 40 years after his death, to the extent that they refer to the destruction of Jerusalem. Our Lord is prophesying both the destruction of, of Jerusalem and the end of the world, so that the first part of that has already happened. A Roman army came under the Roman emperor Titus, and it destroyed Jerusalem. And it, it killed most of its inhabitants, or rather, it killed most of the people who had survived the famine and the siege and the attack, the invasion. There was a Jewish historian at the time of this invasion who left us a first-hand account of it. And he gives us an amazing fact about the destruction of Jerusalem. He estimates that 1.1 million Jews died in Jerusalem alone. But he said that not a single person who died was a follower of Christ. The Jews who believed in Christ all survived that invasion because they knew the prophecies of Christ and they believed in them. And so they had all fled before the Romans got there. They believed in, in the prophecies of our Lord that, that he gave them and the gospel today. So they all fled to a little town called Pella on the other side of the Jordan River outside of Israel, and none of them died. And you might be wondering what signs they saw that were a fulfillment of our Lord's prophecy. <coughs> the answer is that they remembered that our Lord said to flee when they saw the abomination of desolation in the holy <coughs> place. And they saw the standards of the Roman soldiers as their, the Roman army was, in, was marching through the Holy Land, and their standards had pictures of their pagan gods on them. And those were an abomination, and the holy place was the Holy Land. So as soon as the people saw that, they ran for their lives, as our Lord said. The Christians did. They didn't even stop to get their coats. They ran as fast as they could, until they got to the border of Israel. And because of that, they were spared. So the prophecy of our Lord today refers to two events. First, to the destruction of Jerusalem after his death. And second, 
to the end of the world and the destruction of this world. Now, we can't escape the destruction of the world. The world will be destroyed whether we are good or bad. Just as the converted Jews were not able to avert the destruction of Jerusalem by their prayers. But they were able to get through it unscathed. So in the same way, our goal at the last judgment is not to avoid going through it, which we can't. But to get through it unscathed, meaning by saving our souls and being judged worthy of heaven at the end. We should certainly be very fearful at the thought of that last judgment and what we will say to God when we are judged. Imagine how terrifying it is for a criminal to stand in the presence of even just a human judge and await the words of his sentence. That is one of the most frightening things there can be. But when sinners stand before our Lord as the Almighty Judge, and he asks them why they crucified him again by their sins, and they see hell opening up in front of them for them to fall in, and the demons are coming to drag them down into hell, they will be so terrified that they will say to the mountains, fall upon us and crush us, but at least save us from this, as our Lord said, but that will not happen. Fortunately for us, we still have time to prepare our answer for, to that final summons which, as our Lord said, is nigh even at the doors. It will come sooner than we expect, and we don't know if, that will, if our judgment will be our particular judgment at death or at the end of the world, but either way, it will be sooner than we expect. And now is the time for us to examine our whole lives thoroughly and to correct immediately whatever is wrong in our lives. Let us not overlook anything, even something small, <coughs> any attachment to sin that we have, and anything that, that puts us into danger of falling into sin that is not necessary or, uh, or avoidable. We have to remove it from our lives. Let us fix not just our serious problems, but our smaller problems too, because <coughs> the small things lead to the big things. Our Lord said, for every idle word that man shall speak, he shall render an account for it in the day of judgment. So our Lord and his church are giving us this, this wholesome advice today. This is not intended to, to terrify us, but to warn us, and to make us take care of this now while we have the opportunity to do so. In the epistle today, St. Paul is telling us to be worthy partakers of the lot of the saints in light. That is what we need to become today, by doing the will of God and by loving and worshiping God and avoiding sin and anything that displeases him. Certainly the time that we have left in our lives is, is short, but if we do serious penance now, and reform our lives now while we can, as well as we can, that will make up for our past. It says in the Book of Wisdom, being made perfect in a short space, we shall fulfill a long time. This means that with the help of God's grace, we can achieve a lot of atonement and sanctification in a short amount of time that would normally take much longer if we strive harder and ask for God's help more fervently. This week is the last week of this season of the liturgical year, of the Pentecost season, and next week we begin a season of penance, the season of Advent. So let us not only prepare our souls to begin this season in a week, but to prepare for the end of our own life. The reason people commit one mortal sin after another is because they don't think about what will happen to them at the end of their life. So that is why the church is telling us about this today. It is a powerful thought. Let us pray to God 
earnestly for his help. We can't avoid sin by our own strength, but with God's help, we can do it. So let us begin our conversion now, and then we have nothing to fear at the end of the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.